Welcome to The Last Word. I'm David Jenkins. He's Chris Popst. And Chris, uh, Cincinnati Reds manager the other day had a little, uh, little explosion of F bombs. A tirade. A little a tirade? Yeah. You know, should, should we have one of those on the show? No. See if we can beat no, 77. And is, no, no, no. This is PG. I don't know if Charlie has the. I'm sure he has the technology to do bleeping, but. I, I, I just liked it whenever they were bleeping it and you couldn't even hear words. It was just all bleeps. A fabulous show. Fantastic. I like the F words. I like it. Better F words than what, Maybe what he was using. Use the, the, the get a bleep in there. Beep beep. Just to throw it. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna throw a bleep in for him later, so he's gonna have to find it. You know, in, in, in the show, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna throw one in. We're I'll leave that. In. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> It'll be the first time, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a serious note, though, we have uh, it's 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 kind of a good news day for yeah. um, for for w Willie Jimerson. Mm -hmm. He's signing to uh, play basketball for State Fair in mm -hmm. Sedalia uh, Community College. They they struggled last year. They were four and twenty four, but uh, obviously, you know, getting a player of Willie's caliber, you know, he was uh, recruited by Three Rivers as well. I think he mm -hmm. just kind of wanted to get away from home. Uh, uh, as far nothing as wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, uh, we visited with him uh, at, at school during his signing day when he signed, and this is what he had to say. Hello everyone and welcome to The Last Word. Here we are with Willie Jimerson, New Magic County Central Guard. Uh, he just signed with uh, State Fair Community College in Sedalia. You know, Willie, what was it about State Fair that uh, kind, of, kind of drew your eye? What, what was it about them that uh, uh, you were able to, to go there? The academics and the success with guards. Uh, I mean, they produced a, probably arguably the best guards in the, in the country and for his Juco ball and the conference they play in, Region 16, you know, MAG and Three Rivers, and it's just the competition level, and just like Simo Carmen, you know, and uh, they just draw my attention. Coach KT, he kept it, like, real straight up with me, even though they had a, you know, a bad season last year, winning four games, he he said, you know what I'm saying, I can come here and work hard, and we can get back to Region 16 championship. Champions. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for you coming into the college setting, you know, what are some of the things that you, you yourself are going to see yourself kind of maybe working towards it and going into the, the next level? Uh, I, I really got to work on my three-point shot, getting that consistent, and uh, finishing with my left hand. And I get them two down and, you know, just working on my craft. And I get that down, and I, I think I'll go pretty far. Now, I know a lot of fans around here are wondering what's the next step for Willie Jimerson. Do you have any plans as far as that goes? Just, just, are you kind of focused right now just with State Fair? Uh, I'm just focused with State Fair. I'm going one year at a time. And when, when 2017 comes, uh, they will mm -hmm. I think maybe the biggest change for you might be switching the blue from the green. You know, you've been, been in green for a while. You come seeing you in blue now. That's going to be kind of different. <laughs> uh, it will, but I'm, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to just do it. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for joining us. That's uh, Willie Jefferson, headed to State Fair Community College in Sedalia. I think it's awesome when a when a player around here gets signed. You know, he's not the only one. You've got Delfinko Bogan and Andre Statham. They're both going to Jacksonville State. Uh, Blake Reynolds going to Yale. Yeah, you know, he's got a tough life ahead of him. And uh, so limited options. For yeah, and Javante Daniel, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to McCook County Community College, and that's in, uh, in Nebraska. Nebraska. So, yeah, that's uh, a, that's just we don't usually see that that far move away. But you know, hey, a lot. Of, they had Lorenz Banks. He went to Chesapeake College over mm -hmm. on the East Coast, and it was just some kids need that. And from what I understand, if, uh, uh, Lorandis is is doing okay. He's still there, from from what I know now. And and you know, some kids they like to get away, and that's fine. That's what college is about. Get out and mm -hmm. kind of get out on your own, and kind of learn about yourself a little bit, get and philosophical you know, I, a little bit. But I, I was that way. You know, I went yeah. to college. I didn't did not to play sports, but you know, when I went to college. I had offers closer to home where mm -hmm. I could have went, and I went further away, and then ended up coming back home. Yeah. You know, sometimes you you do that, but uh, you know, you, sometimes you just need to get away from home. And I, I you know, I think it's great for Willie. I think that um, you know, I think. For him, I think it's really important for him to go to the next level. He needs to become a true point guard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's kind of, you know, he kind of had to play kind of a swing position for, for New Madrid, and I think he'll learn to play that at, at State Fair, and I think it's just going to benefit him in the long run. Yeah, he's a, he's a small guy that plays around the rim, and that mm -hmm. will not fly no matter what college you go to, Ju Juco, whatever, four-year, obviously not in four-year, mm -hmm. but he can play a little bit around the rim or a little bit around the basket, but he needs to develop that outside game mm -hmm. and his ball handling skills, and that's where he's – if he's going to go to that next level, that's where it's going to be. It's, right. it's, it's, he has to develop there, and I think he knows that. And you know, State Fair, they didn't have a great season last year. They don't really have a tremendous tradition, as far as I can tell, in, in basketball. But you know, hey, 
Willie, I think, is a, an excellent pickup for them. Mm-hmm. He's a, a heck of a player. And, uh, you know, any any guy that goes to college, I'm, yeah. I'm very happy for him. He, he can walk in there and be the guy right off Oh, yeah, no and, doubt. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing big things from him. They get to play Three Rivers. They'll play at Three Rivers, mm-hmm. you know, every year. You know, so we'll get to see him play, you know, close yep. to home. Uh, you know, they'll also play at Mineral Area, which is kind of, you know, an hour and a half drive away, too. So, yep. um, you know, it'll be, it'll be fun seeing him. And it'll also be fun seeing Delfinko and Andre Stadium play for Jacksonville State. You know, they, yeah. they should come to SEMO this year mm-hmm. and play. And, and it'll be fun watching them. I'll, it'll be a game that I root against SEMO root for Jacksonville. <laughs> because I, well, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I want to see our, our kids do well. So yeah, I, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll definitely you know be one of the few times I root against yeah. Simo and yeah. and root for you know. Of course. I'll be there. I want, I want to see you know how, how how much of an impact those three coaches got. Greg Tucker in that mix too, mm-hmm. uh, transferring there. So it's going to be good to, to kind of see those local guys see how see how they do. Uh, transition and play together. And if they do get to see a lot of time, Delfinco going in as a freshman. Uh, and now the same thing with Andre. I don't, don't really know how much time they'll get, but hey, they're they're dynamic players that can definitely make an impact. You know, Jacksonville State struggled some last year too. Mm-hmm. They were twelve and nineteen, five eleven yeah. in the OVC. Mm-hmm. Actually lost to Semo yeah. by a double figure. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do against you know Blake Reynolds. I don't think we're going to see much of him you know, close to home unless maybe on TV. Some yeah, one, may, or, one or two times. May, yeah. Maybe if they have an uh, Ivy League channel or something, yeah. we could catch a game or two. Or <laughs> the, maybe, new maybe, Ivy, the new uh, Ivy League uh, conference. Yeah, make make, a, make the national yeah. tournament or something. Same yeah. way with Javante Daniel. I don't think we're going to be seeing McCook Community College around here. I'll have to soon. check around. They might have a live feed for their website on their websites for games. I don't know if we do. I'll pass that along. But you know, hey, we hey, never know. Never know. Might catch them. You know, speaking of you know, we'll kind of transition here. From, you know, speaking of basketball, mm-hmm. from you know, we have signings here, but also we have some issues going on in Bloomfield right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bloomfield uh, had a chance to. Uh, uh, that, they had apparently a bunch of girls interested in having girls basketball, and it took it's it over school. 50 girls. That was right. interested, yeah, 53 girls in middle school, 31 yeah. girls in high school to play wanted to play basketball, and they took it to the school board, and the school board said, "Nope, we don't, we don't want you." It's a close vote, uh, three to two. Uh, I, I thought a few just reading the story from the uh, uh, the Daily Statesman uh, website, and and they covered it from their news aspect of it. But um, just reading, I thought I actually thought that the school board brought up some really good points, the ones that were kind of against it. I really do, uh, just funding for one, mm-hmm. uh, and taking away from other girls' sports. And at Bloomfield, I know they're, they're not a huge school, but I think they could support a girls' basketball team. It's just where you're going to – the money that it brings in plus the money you're going to spend, I, I don't think it added up. But yeah, so I, say I, don't, I don't ever want to discourage anyone from playing sports because I know that a lot of sports programs are being cut around the, the nation, and it's just – I hate saying that, but I think they did bring up a lot of good points. You know, they uh, they talk about wear and tear on the buses. Yeah. yeah, you know, taking students away from their other sports, I find that ludicrous for for Bloomfield because Bloomfield they only offer you know volleyball and softball, yeah. and they offer cheerleading, which I mean, not to pull hairs, but it's really not a Misha sponsored yeah. activity. So I don't think it goes against the Title IX stuff. They or have what, you know, tons of cheerleaders. I do know they that. They have 50 cheerleaders on Volleyball, the Volleyball, you don't have like eight players, maybe right. nine at the, at the time on a, on a team. I don't. I'm, I guess they have JV as well. Uh, it was softball. I don't really hear much about their softball team. Uh, but yeah. And, and you know, they talked about stretching facilities, yeah. which I understand. You know, Bloomfield hosts a lot of tournaments mm-hmm. and stuff there, and it would be kind of a stretch for their facilities. But, you know, but the thing is that, you know, they wanted money for educational programs, which I admire that. Yeah. You know, you want money for educational programs and your teacher salaries. I see that, but, you know, I think the superintendent had said that, you know, well, we have – you know, we have grants and stuff we can mm-hmm. get for some of that stuff, but we can't get any grants yeah. for, you know, athletics. So if we're going to do this, we need to do it. They voted against it. I, I just think it's, I, you know, I hate seeing, you know, they, they did add cross country, which 19 yeah. students are going to be involved in that. But, you know, there's just not much for girls sports at Bloomfield. I mean, really, there's I mean, not. volleyball and softball, you, you just like to see them have that, and especially when you have that kind of interest. It, uh, when you have close to 80 girls saying they want to play basketball, I mean, there's definitely some interest there. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, they did mention some kind of parent involvement. They just, just asked the kids, and they, mm-hmm. hey, you want to play basketball? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but of course, there's going to be a lot well, of people that say, yeah, but actually, people that come out and, and play mm-hmm. for the team, that number's going to dwindle. That's fine. You know, even if even if it does dwindle, even yeah. if you just have, you know, that, that's you cut 80, it in half, you still got that's 40 84 kids. girls, yeah. you know, interested, and, and you need what, you know. You, know, what, 20, 20, <laughs> you need twenty girls maybe for a high school for yeah. a varsity junior varsity and another twenty for the you hey, know the, you uh, only need ten yeah, if you, you want JV yeah. and a varsity yeah, that's all yeah. you need is ten uh, you know so I mean you don't 
you know, it's not like you know you need a ton of of player, you know. But I, you know, I don't. Know, I I just find it hard to believe that schools, you know, schools like Kelly, they're adding programs and, and you know they're trying to give their kids. You, you know, I I just, I just always kind of frown at you know denying kids opportunities. Yeah. And I'd feel like they're denying you know some kids some opportunities. I do there. feel bad, at, but at the same time, I'm I'm an optimist. I like to look at the bright side. I hope that the school board knows exactly what's best for their school. They know more than I do mm -hmm. for Bloomfield, for, especially. But you know, I, I thought they brought up some good points, and I hate to, for those kids to to not be able to play a sport that they say that they want to play, but I gotta I gotta put my faith in the school board and that they know better for the school mm -hmm. than I do. So. Yeah, and and, I, and you can never you know fault a you know for wanting more educational no, programs no, or something, no doubt. but you know. But like you said, and like Miss uh, Tony Hill said, there are uh, grants, grants and stuff to get for educational purposes. Now this is all that money's got to come out of the school's pocketbook mm -hmm. for basketball and those sports programs, and it, it adds up. It, it does. does. For basketball. 15,500 15, is what they estimate. And you have and to, that's, you have that's to, pricey, but. You have to factor in what it's going to spend and what it's going to bring in, too. And I know girls basketball, you, we want it. It's good. It's It feels good to add it, to have them out there, but it's just not as popular as some of those sports. No, and it, it does it, not bring in the money that, it, that it should. It's not, but, uh, you know, you know, I just, you know, I just hate seeing, yeah. you know, people not being allowed to play. And, you know, that kind of transitions us to our next thing. You know, Popper Bluff is mm -hmm. kind of has been reprimanded by Misha. And you know why I, I hammer Misha time and time and time again. But not this time. I got to applaud them this time. This time they finally did something. Yeah. You know, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, four players from Popper Bluff uh, mm -hmm. on their soccer team uh, got in trouble before their quarterfinal mm -hmm. game. Uh, they were originally suspended. Mm -hmm. Then the parents kind of threw a fit, so they allowed them back on, allowed them to play that quarterfinal game. Now Misha has said that quarterfinal appearance didn't happen. Mm -hmm. that, that's been abolished. Uh, they had to forfeit their quarterfinal appearance. They reprimanded Popper Bluff, which they should have done. And uh, they, uh, you know, apparently two of the players who are returning are suspended for a game next year, which, you know, um, it, it seems fair. Yeah. It, it seems it seems fair to me. You can't you can't let the parents run the run, run the show. That's what that's what's doing there. That's it's, what shocked me is that Popper Bluff actually buckled under that. That they allowed that the parents to kind of come in and say, no, no, this you're not suspending my son or our sons or whatever, and they're mm -hmm. going to play. And then he buckled. That that's not what you're supposed to do, especially with what they were Accused charged with right. them yeah. allegedly doing. And that that's if what I heard was right. That's not right at all. They should not have been playing. They should probably be suspended a couple games this next year, which I, I think they are, right? Or not? Uh, at least one. At I think, least, one? At least okay. one. I think I, I think that's what uh, Misha said. All right, hey, you, they're suspended at least one. What it, what it stems from is uh, because the reason, uh, it, it's not necessarily because they let them play or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, let them back and play. Uh, they had, they, Misha rules said, said they couldn't yeah. play. It wasn't a school policy that yeah. there was, you know, because apparently if you knowingly, if you have a player that's knowingly maybe charged with a crime, then they cannot play until that is yeah. is is finished and I don't know whatever happened with it I don't, I don't think they were ever charged or anything but at the same time you know they they should not you know it wasn't settled by then they shouldn't allow them to play still I, I just you you look at you if something like that happened on coach Greg Hollifield's watch you think he's playing or even on the team oh no yeah no. exactly and, that, and, and that's why they're one of the best programs in the state right now it's but it's not just there you know you look at oh, you, yeah. you look at it, schools all that around that's just one example but right yeah. many examples yeah. of and it's just a it was just a, a black mark on Popper Bluff which normally is not yeah. is not that way and you know I think you know first ever uh, you know quarterfinal appearance uh, it, happened, it all happened real quick mm -hmm. I think it was you know kind of tough to get a hold of I think the parents you know went crazy I think yeah. the school board just kind of you know, just like was taken aback, and I think it was just kind of one of those that just happened so fast they didn't really have time to think about what they were doing, and um, you know, so I, I think Misha did a great thing here. They didn't go overboard with punishment, but they they still reprimanded mm -hmm. them. They took away that quarterfinal appearance, and I, I think that was the right thing to do. Yeah, and, and you and me both, we've had our issues with Misha, and I've documented it with a couple blogs, and they them, them not stepping in when they should. This is a time where they they stepped in and got mm -hmm. it right. So I applaud for that, Misha. And real, real quick, you should be very happy. Otto Porter is playing very well in the playoffs. He is. He, you know, he we is. have you know two two Southeast Missouri grads yeah. in the same in the same playoff series. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tyler Hansborough for Toronto, mm -hmm. and of course Otto Porter for Washington. Otto Porter, you know, fifteen and nine the other night yeah. uh, in game one. He was five and five, but he's playing about thirty three minutes, 30, 34 minutes a game. Yeah, and the, the the maybe the most impressive thing is the defense that he's playing on DeRozan, Demar Rosen. Yeah, he's he held him to six of twenty, I believe, shooting in the last game, and it's just. 
it's just one of those things where you 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 love to see your your hometown mm -hmm. guys on the floor. They're on the same court. They're, and you can throw Bradley Beal in there, another Missouri guy yeah. in there on the same mm -hmm. playing for the same team, and all three of them on the court. That's that's Missouri pride right there. Mm -hmm. that, that that makes you feel good. Uh, we we want Tyler to play a little bit better. Better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He threw up uh, zero and zero <laughs> in twelve and a half minutes in hey, game two, and only okay. had four points. Right. Has, has zero rebounds in the series so far. It's okay. um, it's all right. He'll get it going. He'll get it going. He's due. He's, he's due. due. He's due. Uh, we'll say that. He's, he's due for some breakouts, but yeah. he, he only plays about 12, 12 yeah. and a half minutes a game. That's what kind of what he's played all year. Uh, they, they kind of split their minutes up he a lot. He's a, just a strong role guy. You get in there and, and play as hard as you can, and you know he's going to play as hard as he can mm -hmm. any time he gets in. It's and just, he, he's going to, you know, you definitely know when he's in the game. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's pushing and shoving, and he's physical, and that's, and, that's, and that's, what that's, his, that's what that's his, that's his that's his job, and he. They obviously he don't ask him to score. They ask him mm -hmm. to go in and defend and rebound if he can. And I, I, don't, I don't get to see Toronto play much during the season. I was kind of surprised by the low rebound total. Yeah. The, the scoring total, I'm not surprised by, but the low rebound total, I was kind of surprised by. But yeah. uh, he plays strong defense. Anything extra you get out of him's a plus. So, but it's good to see that. And Washington I'd love leads to see that series two two zero, and it looks NBA like it may be maybe. maybe just a couple more games of that series. Just a couple more. They they look too tough. I, I had some speculation going in. Uh, speculation. I'm stupid. Uh, just a little suspect going in about how they would perform because they didn't really perform the regular season like you would think hey, that they would after the, the, the playoff run they had last saying, year. At the end of the season, they just completely yeah. it seemed like they were collapsing, but they get here in the playoffs and they kind of yeah. turned it they're on. Just they're just such a tough matchup. They mm -hmm. really are. you got John Wall and Brad Beal in the, in the backcourt, and it's just poof, poof. Yeah. Right, we can sit here and talk NBA playoffs all day, and, and we probably will when the camera shuts off. But uh, for now, we're, we're going to sign off. We'll talk pro hopefully more Otto Porter next week, yeah. and uh, we'll see you guys next week on the last word.